Hi, I'm Stephanie Razo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Coral Champion Go Out and Sketch Instructional Video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a coral champion using the techniques learned in the step-by-step -step lesson. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Head out to a garden, park, backyard, or even your kitchen table. Today, I'm sketching clippings from my coral champion houseplant. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, and don't get too caught up with the details. First, you'll want to make sure you know what you want included in your painting. So I chose a couple elements to add to my painting, and I just want to try to arrange them so they fit on the page and they look nice. I like that a lot. And it might take you a while to figure out what you want to include and which pieces you want to include, and that's totally fine. You should take your time figuring that out. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and trace the outside. Now, when you're tracing the outside, it's going to be a little bit bigger than the actual size. Just keep that in mind. But it's a great, fast way to get the plant onto your page. And it helps you get more or less accurate sizing. So you can just kind of trace around each part, getting an idea of where things are. And here, I couldn't really trace it, so I'm doing the best I can with what I have. And just kind of eyeballing this part too and drawing around it. This is very interesting because all of the tiny little flowers are here on the spadix. And I can start to draw those in a little bit. I have it right here and you can get really exact and try to um, get all of these and it looks like they're kind of in a spiral shape so you can draw lines on the spadix and then draw them going up because that's pretty much how it is this little uh, diamonds cir circular areas too little diamonds going all the way up so you can draw that diagonal going down the spadix that helps. So I'm gonna move this to the side and start adding in more details. And this is a little smaller, like I said, than our tracing. So this is where you have to kind of freehand it. You can only trace so much. You could take the flower apart and trace it, but I don't recommend that. And it's not gonna be exact. I'm just gonna get a quick idea. So I'm gonna draw these lines in and then just approximate. So little diamond shapes here, and then little circles. And this is even more detailed than our step-by-step. -step. But we're focusing on just this one, so it helps. And we're doing it at size rather than smaller. And the step-by-step, -step, we're drawing it bit smaller. It helps to keep your head in a similar position the entire time in relation to what you're drawing. That way your viewpoint doesn't change and the object doesn't change much, which is controllable when you're doing a plant rather than an animal. But as you can see, my view did change a bit when I moved it and I press down on it, it changes, and popping it up, it changes. So you just have to be careful about what exactly you're doing with the plant. You can make some small changes. You wanna use really light marks in this stage. And then darker marks for lines that you wanna keep. So as you start getting the details 
in and you know that's where they want where you want those lines to be just go ahead and press a little bit harder and then you know that those are the lines you want to keep rather than those lines behind it I like to leave a lot of the sketchy lines it's fun for the style and it's also saves time these lines I'm gonna get rid of though because they weren't really approximation lines as much. So the stem comes directly below the spadix. So I'm gonna make sure that, that connects as I draw that. So I'm drawing the line all the way down, very light marks, because I'm going to erase this right here. Because it's you're not gonna see the stem that's a solid part of the spathe. Draw just a few detail elements here. There's a straight line coming here. And then I can see a few areas in which there's some grooves. And I'm not gonna get real exact about this. Again, I'm up just getting an approximate sizing and where the lines are because I don't want to spend too much on this. This is just a sketch. I'm just getting an idea of this plant. Save that for when you're doing a really detailed painting. It's good to study the plant before you do paintings. So this is a very good skill to have. If you want to pursue more detailed art. And it helps you develop your drawing skills as well. So once you have all of that in, you can move on to the other element. I'm going to move on to the leaf. Now I want to include all the leaf. I don't care too much about this stem. And I don't care too much about this other stem either. So I think that that'll work out well because it's poking out a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and trace it. And this one's pretty easy to trace. It's popping up just a little bit here. Stem going down. And then any kind of um, sizing you want, like maybe you want to include this vein here. You want to put a little mark there to know where that is. And this vein comes out in a little mark there and then another groove there. So there's these major points where the veins meet. And this side, I can't, maybe you can see it on your on the video, but I can't really see these because of the light reflection. I can't really see these veins, so I'm not going to worry too much about those, but there is one coming up here. And so you can make little marks to note where those special points are to help you draw it in. So then I'm going to move that to the side. Again, it'll change a little bit because I did move it, but we have the basic shape down. That's all we really need. And it's gonna be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in. Clo out, I'm gonna go from this side of the line, I'm gonna go over a little bit, just draw it in a little bit. And then I'll remember that I had these points helping me, guide me. So I'll start adding those in and then it makes it a lot faster than just eyeballing it.
going to add the scientific and common name. And now I'll move on to adding some paint. So if you completed this step by step, you may have some paint left over and you can just revive it with a little bit of water or you can remix it. But since this is the same plant that was painted in the step by step, I have all the colors ready. It makes it a little faster. So I'll add paint in the same order I added it when completing the step by step. So I'll add a champion green, I'm very wet light color. So when I'm saying wet, it's wet in my palette. And I'm gonna start left to right so I don't smudge. And I'm gonna paint the leaves and the spadix and the stem. And I'm just starting, I did add a little bit of water there because it was a little bit dark, but I don't necessarily recommend you doing that because it gives you a lot less control. That could be fun too. Dab it off on my towel before applying it again. It's a bit dry when I mixed it, so it wasn't really flowing over the paper. You'll want to have a slightly wetter, Color and you could do add some water to it just like I did or you can add it in your palette which is a little bit safer. So I got some paint out of the lines and that's totally fine. This is just a sketch. If you need a little bit more paint, if it's a little too light, just pick up a little bit more paint from your palette and you can add it to those wet areas. And then go ahead and add that here. And bring this to the right view. There's just a little bit of green on the edge of this one, on the spathe and on the stem. And actually, I almost missed. There's a little green on a tiny little tip here. While this is drying, I'm going to add a little bit of the Champion Pink. And again, I already have these mixed, so I'm just reviving them with a little bit of water in my palette. That is really dark, but this is a very, very dark spathe, so maybe I do actually work on that slightly darker side there. I think I can just cover the entire thing. So you want it to be wet enough that you can move it. But not too wet that it buckles the paper. So in order to control that, you can make sure to dab your, towel, your brush off onto your towel. And when I'm applying the paint, I try to work from one side to the other when I'm doing large areas and kind of going in the direction of the shape itself. So the lines are this way in this direction, so I try to kind of paint that way. So if there are any lines, it kind of goes, correlates with the lines of the drawing. So in order to check to see if this is dry, you can just dab it with your finger. And since we're not using too much water when we apply it to the paper, it's gonna dry pretty fast. So that's fat, that's dry. So I'm going to add some Champion Red to the leaf. And it's a bit darker in my step-by-step. Step. Just on my paper. I still want it to be lighter. 
It's better to start a little bit light than too dark. So I see there's a little bit of red in the stem, the mid, mid vein here, and in the stem, just a little bit. So I'll add a little bit there. And then it kind of has this, this, this red undertone to it. it. Starts kind of in this area. Again, this is not really, I didn't really have enough water to make it go over this large space, but now I do. And I this time I went ahead and picked that up in my palette and not doing it on my paper. And the red is a little darker in between the veins and on the edge of the leaf. So I'm going to try to keep the paint there and the color will naturally lessen as I'm painting. So I'm working on the darker side to the lighter side. Picking up a little bit more and doing the same over here. Being careful, this is already dry, so it's okay. But if it's wet, be careful. I'm always dabbing my brush off onto my towel before applying it to my paper. And while this is wet, you can add a little bit more paint if you need to. I'll clean my brush off a little bit. And then I'm gonna add the red to this spathe as well. So of course, testing it on my test strip, little test paper. And I don't want it to be too wet, so I didn't add too much water because it's, I wanna be able to control it. Dabbing it off onto my towel before applying it. Also wanted to be dark, not light. So I'm drawing these lines in. Again, not being too exact, just kind of getting an idea of the different parts of this plant. See if this is dry. It feels like it needs just a little bit more time. It's a little wet here in the middle for some reason. So I'll let that dry and then I'll move on. So with the clean brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit more green. And this time I'm going to do a drier, darker green. Looks pretty good. And let's start adding that here. dark around certain areas gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional shape.
and I'm adding more here because there would be a shadow like here if this was over the stem. And then I'll add a little bit to my leaf. There isn't a lot of really dark green on this leaf. Clean off my brush. I'm going to add the purplish color to really darken up this leaf here. I'll be really careful not to get my hand in the green that I already painted. And if you need to wait, you can wait for that to dry. And even though this whole leaf is dark here, I'm especially at the top. I'm going to leave some areas where the light's hitting it to show the reflection. So I'll just leave it blank just a little bit. And the color is just a little bit different. Then our step by step, but I'm going to use these same colors for consistency. And it's a little lighter, so I'm cleaning my brush off, getting it some water on it, and just kind of pulling that color down to create a little bit of a gradient and then there's a little bit in my brush but this whole area is a little bit lighter in general. That's gonna be a bit of a messy gradient but it's fine it's a fast and easy gradient. I'm gonna just do the same thing on this other side. This is a very dark space, so I'm going to add a little bit more red to the whole thing. Just kind of keeping an eye on making sure not to add too much where the light hits it. So this is kind of a medium color. And by leaving some areas light and some areas dark and kind of this medium shade as well, make it look a little more three-dimensional, even though we're only adding a few layers of paint. So while this is drying, I think I might add just a little bit more dark green to the speedix here, just to give a little bit more contrast. And up here and the shadow area here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. In between layers, make sure you fill it, refill your water brush or change your water if needed, if you're using a regular brush. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the red to the leaf. I'm going to use kind of a medium darkness on that color. And I'm just going to add it to the whole thing. This leaf is super red. There, I will actually, I'll leave a few areas blank for contrast. but not a lot. 
If you get too much paint, dab it off, and then you can make sure that those areas end up lighter, not too dark. And I'm being real messy with this. I'm not worrying too much, just getting a layer of paint over the space. I'm going to take a little bit of a drier, darker color, that red, and add it to the space here. Just to bring it forward just a little bit more. And again, it's a bit lighter in the watercolor than it is in person. So if you want to build it up a little bit more, you can or even makes a darker color. I just wanted to stay with the other colors I used in the step-by-step, -step, so it's a little lighter. But if you want to try to match that color, use your color wheel and mix away. There are lots of grooves here, so I'm just kind of adding a little bit of little marks in here to indicate that texture. I'm not being exact with it at all, I was just putting approximate spots. Let's need a little bit more time to dry. You want to really dry before adding your ink lines. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit more and then I'm going to add the ink lines. While waiting for this to dry, I decided I want to add a little bit more of the Champion Purple. And what I had left in my palette was not dark enough. So I went ahead and remixed it. And I'm gonna go ahead and add it to this leaf. So adding one final layer here. Yeah, I like that a lot better. It's okay, take your time and wait for it to dry before you decide to move on to finalizing the art. You can always add more layers of paint and ink as you need it. Pick up more paint when you need it. You can add it to the wet areas too if you want to make them a little darker. To add a little more contrast. Doing this leaf out size makes me want to add more details. I don't want to overwork it. So I'm going to stop after this layer and then add my ink lines.
I'm gonna go ahead and stop there, let it dry, and then add the ink lines. And you see as I added more water here, it starts to buckle just a little bit, that's okay. Now I'm gonna use the 005 Micron to write in the common name and the scientific name. And I'm gonna also use it to add some of the lines. So I can redefine some of the lines here if you need to. And then I'll refer to my plant reference and kind of base it on where my paint ended up. So you can just go through and draw over your pencil lines or redraw some new lines. Go ahead and add the O1 micron lines here. Those are just some slightly thicker lines. I'm going to use this to write in the scientific name again. So I think I want that to be a little bit darker this time. And then anything that's still on the thin side but um, not too thick, you want to go ahead and add with this. You can always go back and add more 01 lines, but I'm gonna move on to the 08 first. Maybe go back to the 01. Adding 08 black micron lines. Let's start with this common name, since it's at the top of my page. Before this ink dries, it does tend to smudge, so be careful. I'm gonna work on the left to the right, just for that reason. There's a lot of hard edges on this plant because it has this thick, waxy structure. So I'm gonna be using this pen pretty heavily here. To help show how thick and waxy it is. Kind of mimic the heaviness. So we are done, and again, if you'd like to add more paint or more layers of ink, you can go ahead and do that as much as you like. Just make sure it dries in between. Make sure to add any environmental observations, your thoughts, your feelings, anything that you are thinking about or want to add to this page. You can just add it in all the little empty areas here. Great job and keep practicing.